Way cool. All right. Okay, that was amazing, Mr. Sims. Yeah. All right. So, hey, but the opposite mm. is endothermic. endothermic. These aren't usually as exciting, but they are still but part of the this universe. this is pretty cool. This one will be cool. We'll show you. So this is when energy is absorbed into the system. So we're here we have a system where the surroundings are warm. Because remember, things always go from hot to cold. Right. And this would be cold. Mm -hmm. And so the energy is going to go into the system from the outside. Yep. And so this would be endothermic. Energy goes into, into the, system the system or is absorbed into the system. Yeah. Make sense? Mm -hmm. All right, so I think we should do a video clip. Well, today we'll be talking about endothermic and exothermic reactions. What we have set up right here, first of all, is an endothermic reaction, which means it draws heat in from the surroundings into the system so that the reaction actually gets warmer and the surrounding area gets cooler. In this case, we'll be working with barium hydroxide, BaOH2, and ammonium thiocyanate, which is NH4SCN. So for this particular experiment, I'm going to take a drop of water here, extract it, place it on this block of wood, bam, place this beaker on top of it, and cause a reaction between the two. Since this is endothermic, it will be drawing heat out of the surroundings, in this case the water, which will cause the water to freeze and we'll be able to pick up the block of the wood with the beaker. So now I'll be adding the barium hydroxide first, right into the beaker over our water. Bam. Followed by the ammonium thiocyanate. I'm going to go ahead and stir these two together. They'll get kind of goopy and start drawing in heat from the surroundings into the system. Endothermic reaction. <laughs> As you can see, the reaction has uh, occurred now. We've got a nice combination of the two. The reaction has probably a little bit of time left, but uh, for the most part, it's completely reacted. You can see here the water here is quite chilly, and the stuff directly below the beaker is frozen. Very good. Now that it's frozen, bam. <laughs> Woo! And no, take it apart and show oh. them that there's nothing in between. Yeah. To reveal that I'm totally legit. Well, this Let's do too. All right. That was cool too. Also very cool. Very cool. cool. It was cool. Cool. <laughs> R -R. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Dom. Yeah. All right. All right. right. All right. Now we should talk about the difference between heat and temperature. Okay. A lot of people get these confused. Okay. Right. So here's the question: Which is warmer? Not warmer. Warmer. Which has more energy? Okay. Actually, before we do that, let's do this. Okay. Heat is all of the energy of a system. Okay. So heat is all of the energy. So if I have a big lake right here. Okay. It's like Rampart Reservoir. Yeah, it does. I think. I think it is. It is, thanks. Uh -huh. Yes, it is. Uh, or I have a small cup of coffee. Uh huh. Which has more heat? Total heat. Yeah. Total heat is going to be the lake. You know, I think we should probably um, take a field trip right now. Let's do it. So let's take a field trip to a triathlon. And uh, so we'll go to the triathlon and talk about this. Okay. Can I walk on my treadmill at the triathlon? Sure, but they'll think. So, hey, now we learn about some more stuff about triathlons, yeah. and we saw that, of course, there's more energy in the... In the lake. The lake than there is in the coffee cup. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Even though the coffee cup is hotter yes. in terms of temperature. Because there's a difference in temperature, all right? Okay. okay. So let's just kind of summarize the difference between heat and temperature. All right. Let's, let's heat and temperature. All right, heat, heat is our total energy. This is total energy... And temperature is an average of the kinetic energy of the molecules. So average kinetic energy. Remember, we talked possibly, yeah, we did on a previous podcast, about the Boltzmann diagram. And the average kinetic energy is this amount. So some chemicals or some uh, molecules would have high energy, maybe up here, and some would have low. This is the average one, where this is the total. So if you think of this graphically, the total energy in this graph is essentially everything under the curve. The average is only just the average molecule right here. Yeah. So we can think of it graphically, okay? So how does that play out in a chemical reaction, or in a chemical equation, okay? So if it's exothermic, here's what you, the energy is going to go on, well, the right side of the equation. Right. So, and it's the right side because if, if energy is going out, it's like a product. It's being released yeah. from the equation. So here's a classic reaction. reaction, methane yeah. plus oxygen. The um, exothermic reaction that we saw earlier uh -huh. in our podcast, yep. um, 6 CH4 plus O2, and that released energy. So mm -hmm. if it released energy, we would put energy right here. 
Right. Exothermic, now, it goes on the right side. It goes side, on the right side. Released now, as a, as a side note, that typically, not just typically, is actually a number. So this might be like uh, 212 kilojoules. I don't know the right. exact number. We will learn later how to calculate mm -hmm. that number. So I'll write the word energy, but note that it's actually a particular number. Okay. And, uh, oh, just, I'm really good. It's actually, all right, it's not 212. It's <laughs> 900, no, I can't write, 902 kilojoules. Now, Mr. Sanders, there's a negative sign yes, there. Yes, there is. What does that mean? Negative, I didn't know you could have negative energy. Negative energy means it's going away from the system. The system is losing its energy. Yeah. means it's exothermic, so we put a negative sign when we talk in terms of delta H. So here is the actual equation right here. Right. Notice when you write it in the equation, the negative sign isn't there. The fact that you're putting it on the product side implies that it's exothermic. Yep. And so when you write it in the equation, you don't put the sign, but if you're just talking about the value of delta H, you do put the sign. That's exactly right. Okay, good. And actually, here's a, a graph. Make sure you a graph this. This is the exothermic energy graph. Right. Notice the energy of your reactants are greater than the energy of your products. So it would be CH4 plus 2O2 makes CO2 plus 2H2O. This is the reaction we had just a right. little bit ago. And this, they call delta E. We actually don't usually call it delta no. E. We call it delta H. That's the, t the change in energy. This is the difference energy. from here to here. It's the change in energy as it went down. And this number, if you were to measure it on the graph, would be 902 kilojoules. So it goes down 902 kilojoules. Right. Make sense? Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Now let's talk about this in an endothermic reaction. So in an endothermic reaction, the energy goes on, well, the opposite the side, side, not the right side, but on the left side. So here's a classic reaction that is All right. endothermic reaction, okay? Now, this, we, don't have a, we didn't do this one, but, and here is the value of delta H. Notice that it's positive. Okay. And so if it's positive, then you put it on the, well, the left the side. The left side. Positive delta H means that it's going into the system. The system is gaining that much energy. Yes, and so energy, we could also just write the word energy on this side. But it's, it's actually a number, and I want you to understand that. In this case, it's 76.7. Actually, we'd say just 76.7 kilojoules, not per mole, but kilojoules, wouldn't we, Mr. Sanders? Probably, yeah. Okay. All right, so here is an endothermic reaction. I would label that endothermic reaction a graph. Yeah, notice that the energy of the reactants is lower than the energy of the products, meaning we have to put energy into the system to get the reaction to proceed. So this would be, I think it was a 3 here and a 2, no. No. A three on a one, one and, a and this was a two. Yep. And the difference here, the A right here, no, this would a. be C. Pardon me, C. Thank you. C would be seventy six. Seventy whatever it was. Whatever, yeah. whatever it was. We'll go back. I think it was seventy six. Seventy six. Seventy six. We'll call it seventy seven. Seventy seven kilojoules. It rose up seventy seven kilojoules. Later on, we might talk about this thing, the activated complex, and how that works. But that's going to be like unit ten. Yep. Later so on. So let's not worry about it. Really, notice there's a difference in the energies. Okay. So that explains what exothermic, endothermic. We had lots of cool demos. We got a trip to the triathlon. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and, and a trip up. No, that was the last time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, so.